but our panelists, the first person to go out it, and speak is Ina Shevchenko. And uh, she is from Femen. Uh, many of us know uh, Femen and its protests. And she has had threats from Belarus, the KGB there. A very brave woman. Now she's in France and she's going to tell us. Thank you. Hello? Yes. Um, well, I got threats. Uh, I'm in France not because of Belarus threats, but because of, in fact, um, religious threats. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, dear secularist, secular believers, atheists, infidels, heretics, unbelievers, faithless, defectors, sinners, betrayers, deserters, traitors, rats, sons of devils, uh, witches, everybody who is supposed to be beheaded, and all those who are promised to burn in hell. Thank you very much for those two <laughs> inspirational days full of hope for progress, for future and quick progress. Thank you. Um, so we were today. I, I, I would try to be um, to be that connection between uh, beautiful female morning and our panel on blasphemy, and I would um, talk more about the need of uh, female blasphemy rather than uh, all the persecutions that blasphemers are facing all over the world, because I, I think that other panelists will talk about it. But for the beginning, let me go a little bit further from a question of blasphemy and just ask you a question uh, to raise hands if you, if you would call yourself a feminist. How many of you are here? Well, incredible, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Um, let's say majority, if, if not all. And I have my first slide for you. Not this one. Can, I, I should do that, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, this one. Um, that's, that's my first slide for all of you, for feminists. And horrible news. The drawer of this caricature was not persecuted. Uh, not any state condemned this drawing and the work of the painter. And um, the author of, the, of this book, the next slide, where is this? Um, this anti-feminist book. The author never had to hide herself uh, from a bunch of violent feminists seeking for bloody revenge. And why it is so? Because feminism is just an idea, right? And everybody has a right to express an idea. Feminism is just an idea, even though it's the most beautiful idea, but it's still just an, just an opinion, same as a religion, is just an idea and just an opinion and just a point of view or lifestyle or philosophy. You can call it uh, whatever you want, but it is just an idea and nothing more. And as every idea, this idea should be criticized. We should be able to laugh. We should be able to mock it, but we are not. We are not in uh, religious states, and more to say, we are not even in secular states, very often. I'm coming from um, Ukraine, and um, I think that many of you um, were called as blasphemers for your activity or for what you said. Not many of you did this, of course. Um, not many of you chopped down the cross like I did. Um, but for that, of course, we were called as blasphemers in Ukraine and all over the world. Um, and um, when you commit such an act of resistance to religious, religious oppression, and in this case to influence of Orthodox uh, Church in Eastern Europe, basically in all post-USSR countries, um, when you commit such an act, and when religion is connected strongly and linked strong, uh, strongly to the, to the state, in this case, all the tools and instrument of, uh, of a state will be thrown in a fight against you. Particularly in this action, after this action, I had to flee Ukraine um, because of uh, political persecution and because of criminal case that was opened against me, not for blasphemy, 
because such an article doesn't exist in our constitution. Uh, the, the charges were for um, hooliganism, and in the explanation of my hooligan, hooligan act, there was nothing uh, that could point that I chopped down the cross. Because in fact, this cross officially doesn't exist. This cross was put by activists um, during Orange Revolution, by Catholic um, activists who just decided to thank God or to ask him to bring freedom to Ukraine. And as we can see, it didn't work. Um, uh, so, um, this cross never existed officially, and this is why we choose to chop it down. Why would it uh, be there if, if, it, if it's not supposed to be there? Um, but after, let's say two hours after this protest um, was already discussed in media, um, the news, the horrible news came out, um, uh, was spread by a Russian TV channel, by first Russian TV channel that is basically the main rupor of uh, politic of Putin. Um, the reporters uh, said that feminine activists chopped down memorial for victims of Stalinism. Voila. And that was, of course, uh, something that definitely raised a huge uh, protest of society against this, this protest. And of course, uh, it was very hard after and still till today, it's very hard to prove people that it's not that cross. Because in fact, the real memoriam, mem memorial is located at the, same, um, at the same square and it's out of stone as uh, normally monuments are. And I think Nadia Elfani was in Kiev and she saw the real memorial. Right, yeah, <laughs> she can prove. Um, so the point is that when people are going uh, on such an act of committing blasphemy, criticizing, uh, criticizing religion, uh, be ready for persecution, be ready for attacks uh, from the state, from media, from, from society that will be uh, often um, foolish by, by uh, or uh, that will often receive a um, uh, lie as an information about your act. This would happen in our case. Uh, but blasphemy is not only such a radical, let's say, act as we commit, as we love to commit, to be honest. But blasphemy today uh, can be also a public kiss of a gay couple. Blasphemy today can be also unveiled Muslim woman. Blasphemy um, can be, as blasphemy, we can also call a dance, a drawing, a book, a song. Religious institutions took a responsibility to identify what blasphemy is. And my initiative today will be to encourage or to propose all of us to take uh, to take these um, this responsibilities on us to identify what blasphemy is. My identification of blasphemy is that blasphemy is a sign of freedom of speech at first, and second, blasphemy is an important tool to set, to set up and to reach pure secular society. When we criticize religion, we are reaching the point when we can destroy myth of, um, of holiness, of, of some terrorists like religion, of, of their books, and such a science like, for example, cross. Um, we, should, we should have right to mock religion. We, shou we should have right to laugh at it. We should have right to go out in the street and to talk about it. And blasphemy is one of the way um, to, to reach this equality. But um, I have to point that there is a need in blasphemy only as long as blasphemy is dangerous and as long as um, consequences after blasphemy, I mean, are dangerous for us and as long as blasphemy is condemned or forbidden, blasphemy will happen and it has, it, it has to, to happen. When we will not be condemned, 
when we will not be attacked or persecuted for critic of religion or even for such acts that in fact are not criminal cases because again this cross doesn't exist um, when such acts will stop to be condemned and criticized by believers and non-believers because very often even secular secularists are um, seeing uh, acts of blasphemy as something that doesn't have to happen when condemnation of such acts will stop blasphemy will not happen anymore it will not make sense and we will not need to do it and I will never take uh, will never learn how chainsaw is working to commit such acts thank you very much um, so no I didn't finish no I'm, um, I'm I'm thinking about about warning me for two minutes more um, of my of, uh, speech of um, uh, offender um, well I believe that maybe already many of you um, are ready to go out and to chop down something uh, but still I want to maybe disappoint a half of this room um, male part um, I believe that uh, female blasphemy makes much more sense. Uh, I believe that female blasphemy is stronger and much more dangerous act for religious institutions. And why so? Because we all, we are during during those two days, it was often pointed that it's women's rights that will be always attacked at first by religious institutions. It's women who will be the first victims. Um, of religious oppression and it is religion that is one of the main manifestations of patriarchal culture and patriarchal society um, Theism told, told, uh, tells women that we are brought to earth uh, on earth by male God to serve man on earth again even in this idea we are explained that we are slaves of a man but in this case it's even more ridiculous than in other cases because that male one he even never dared to show off right here in front of us he never was here um, so in such a in such a um, with such within such an ideology with within such a uh, philosophy female the act of blasphemy don't ban me <laughs> <laughs> female act of blasphemy is making much more much more sense no hello hello <laughs> of blasphemy is much more dangerous uh, to uh, to oppressive oppressive ideology like like any religion a monotheistic religion let's talk about them clearly uh, because female act of blasphemy is destroying the man's the male system from inside can we negotiate <laughs> no <laughs> okay um, well minute, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm finishing. Um, I made my clear point that I believe that that women's act of resistance to uh, to, re to oppressive religious institutions are making are making a strong strong point and are really dangerous to those systems. And just shortly to finish my scream from inside because I think from those uh, during those two days we really melted in this room that is bringing so much comfort to our mind and our beliefs because um, you all are doing great job and we all agree generally uh, and let's not forget that when we go out of this room we we are not often meeting such a people uh, like you, so I, I just, I just really want to, to, to explain, uh, to expose my screen from inside that we need to criticize religion and we need to attack religion. Attacking religion doesn't mean that we are taking a right of from believers to believe in something. Attacking religion is. Is, it's, is, as I said, is one of the main tools to reach secularism, where we are able to defend religion and to criticize religion on the same level. We are still not on the level when we can have an equal discussion about religion if we are not in such a room like here. And I believe that um, acts of blasphemy have to, to happen because this way we can show 
that religion is not true, we can show that religion is an obstacle on the way of progress, we can show that religion is an intolerant, very often intolerant ideology that is demanding tolerancy to itself, and we can show that we can progress and develop and be equal without religion. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Obviously, the timekeeping of the uh, audio system is better than mine. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a free speech guy, right? So how, how can I stop anyone, and particularly such a good speech? What I'd like to remind us is what Christopher Hitchens said in this context. He always used to say that religion is an idea, and ideas can be criticized. And I think it's something worth bearing in mind. Yeah. <laughs>